Hey guys, welcome to the fourth lesson on fundamentals of C++ programming. Today we're going to be talking about loops in C++. We're going to be talking about what are loops, we're going to talk about how we use them, and why we use them. Alright, so to get started, we first have to have an understanding of what a loop is before we can start writing the code for it. Now, a loop in, in all programming, or in most programming languages, including C++, is simply a type of um, statement, I guess you could say, that executes a, a, cert, a set of code or executes a certain amount of code um, multiple times. So, um, um, if I have a block of code that, let's say, prints statements to the console, if I put that around a loop that they executed five times, it would print out the statement to the console five times. So the main purpose of a loop is to execute a set of code multiple amounts of times. Now there are a decent amount of types of loops, and I'm not going to cover them all in this lesson. I'm going to just show you the, the basic ones. I'm going to show you the while loop, the do while loop, and the for loop. Now each loop um, is good at doing dirt, um, different things. Um, the while loop, which would be the first one I go over, is the, you know, the while and do while are powerful loops. They can do a decent amount of things. And the for loop is kind of like a shorthand. If you want to do a specific type of loop, then you can use the for loop instead of having to do with the while. But just to note before I get into it, a while loop can do anything that a for loop or do, actually, yeah, it could do anything a for loop could do. Now, um, so now that we know what a loop is, and like I said, a loop just execute, executes a block of code a certain amount of time. So now that we know that, we can start with the basics. Um, I'm gonna just, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a program using the a for loop. I mean, using a while loop that will just display to the console "Hello World" a certain amount of times. So, before we could do that, let's, let's learn the syntax of a while loop. It, it's pretty basic. It's while, and then we have parentheses, and inside of these, we're going to put some kind of expression that evaluates to a boolean value, or a bool value. That's important with a while loop. A while loop, you could put something inside of the while loop as long as... As long as it evaluates to a value that is a bool, so it either a true or false. So while loops only understand true or false values, and it makes sense because you want a loop to continue on for a certain amount of time while something is true. The moment that thing is false, then the while loop or whatever loop you're talking about will stop. So that's what it goes in here. So, and then after that, we'll make our blocks for a while loop, and then while this is running for while as long as this is true whatever conditions in here uh, the while loops code which will go inside of these blocks any code that's inside of these blocks will execute while this loop runs so if I want to let's try to work a little bit backwards I want to write hello world to the console maybe five or ten times so traditionally it would look like this so I have my my statement that displays hello world to the console. Let's run this. And we can see that once this runs, we, we can see that it says hello world. This is basic. We did this in the last lessons. But now we want to wrap this around. We want to wrap something over this that can make this execute a certain amount of times. And the first way we're going to do this, like I said, is using a while loop. Now, to do something like this, we need some extra help. Um, we can't just use a while loop because what is going to go into our um, condition here that's going to make it execute a certain amount of times? We need some kind of counter control variable. And that's what differenti differentiates this and a for loop. A for loop has this built in, which we'll see, but a while loop doesn't. But this makes the while loop more powerful because it could do other things. But for this specific example, we need some kind of control variable that will control how many times we've executed. So I want to make a, a variable, say int count, and we're going to start at zero. So this is my counter control variable. Now I'm going to say while the count is less than, let's say five, for example. My code for my block is going to be the loop, right? So 
inside of my while is going to be this statement hello world because this is what I want to uh, be displayed and I spelled count wrong okay so now this is this is the basics of my while loop but we have a problem with this and the problem is right now this is called an infinite loop this if I have ran this program right now this loop would run forever because there's nothing that's making this statement false right this statement right here will be true forever while count which is zero is less than five okay zero is always less than five so this will say hello world forever this is called an infinite loop if I run this this is what we'll see hello world being displayed forever this will go on forever it will never stop so this is an infinite loop so we need something that will terminate this program and it's pretty simple we need to just increment our count variable by one every single time that it, it runs its code because that means it ran once so at the end of this I'm gonna go count plus plus and now that's gonna increment my count by one thus making this statement eventually end because if it goes up by one eventually it's gonna say five is less than five and that's false and then it will stop running so let's go ahead and run this now and now what we'll see is that it says it five times hello world one two three four five the reason why it's five is because we start at zero so it's going to go zero one two three four four is less than five but then when it turns to five five is not less than five so that's why we see it five times so this is the basics of a while loop and uh, so if we want to do something for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of iterations we, we, we implement a counter control variable like this now keep in mind this code right here because this is so common the for loop replaces this whereas a while loop is very powerful it could do many types of loops it doesn't have to be a counter control or a definite loop it can also do indefinite things as well and um, an indefinite loop with a while loop is is possible because um, a variable can change right that's inside of this so we can um, this is considered a definite loop because we know how many times it's going to run an indefinite loop would be something that goes for a certain amount of time and only stops when someone enters in a certain button or something like that so if someone tells it to stop then it would stop then that's an indefinite loop because we don't know beforehand when it's going to end and the while loop is capable of doing that the for loop helps replace this it makes it easier to make a loop like this a definite loop so for loops are good with definite loops it's like a shorthand it, it takes all the requirements in this and puts it into one line of code and we'll see that what I mean uh, by that when we get to that all right, so before we move on to, to more loops, I just want to let's just mess around with this loop because I, I always think that it's good practice just to mess around with the stuff. So let's mess around with the, the while loop for a little bit and see what we can do. So the first thing I want to try to do is I want to build a program that asks the user to enter in a number, and then the while loop will go off for as long as to like it will go it would increment as many times as the user tells it to so if it does it like if the user types in a 10 the while loop will execute 10 times and so on so I want to first do something with that and then maybe we'll do something a little bit harder so to do this program we need the user to enter in a number so let's go ahead and ask the user to enter a number we're gonna say um, see out please enter a number and L then we're going to create a variable to hold our integer. Well, I want to make an integer just for argument's sake. Um, I'm going to say number. And then I'm going to say C in my number. So I'm going to get in the number that the user entered. And then I'm going to set up my while loop. Now, yeah, I mean, there's different ways I could do this. But I'm going to um, set up my while loop. I'm going to create my count. So this is my count right here. I'm gonna say while um, count is less than the number that was typed in and while that's true I'm gonna execute something but I'm gonna also increment count don't forget about that that makes this makes the for loop or I mean this makes the loop terminate and every time they um, it iterates I'm gonna say hello world and there we have it so now when I run the program says please enter a number I'm gonna enter in 15 and now we see 15 hello world let's try this again let's enter in 500 this time 
bam, 500 hello worlds. So this is what that. Pro so let me quickly go over this again. We ask the user to enter in a number with just standard output. We create a variable that will hold the number. We take in the number with C in. This will wait on this line until the user enters in something. And then we set up our while loop. We set up our count, which controls how many times our loop's going to run. So we're saying while the while the count is less than number. The count will increment by one every time the loop runs, thus making the loop eventually end. And while we're less than number, whatever number that they typed in. Okay. So um, yeah, so this is a basic example. Okay, let's let's do something else. Let's this time around. Let's go ahead and say, there, when they enter in a number, we're gonna take that number and add up all the numbers up to that number. So for example, if they entered in a five, we would go one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and then at the end we'll display what all the numbers added up together are. So let's start off by C out. Please enter a number like that. Then I want to say int number, cn number. Now that I have that, let's go ahead and set up our loop. So let's make our int count equal zero, while count is less than number. So our loop is pretty much the same right here. But now when we iterate over it, we're going to, instead of just displaying hello world, we're going to do some kind of simple algorithm. And we're just going to add um, some numbers up together. So we need another variable that will hold our um, total of all the numbers added up together. This is going to hold our total. So every time it runs, we're going to go total plus equal um, count. So, um, right? That's right, right? So we have our two variables. Our total variable is going to hold up all our numbers added together, and our count is going to be incrementing. I need to do count plus plus our count is going to be incrementing every time it runs. So the first time around, it's going to say, is count less than number? So let's say they type in 5, hypothetically. Is 0 less than 5? Yes, it is. We come in. Total plus equal count. So total plus equal 0. Okay. Count plus plus. We come back around. Is 1 less than 5? Yes, it is. Total plus 1. Okay, now total is 1. Count plus plus. Okay. Is 2 less than 5? Yes, it is. So it goes total plus our or 1 plus equal 2. So now total is 3. Count plus plus uh, 4 and they keep on going around. So let's go ahead and try this. Actually the, the last thing we need to do is we need to after the loops over so when we exit the loop that means we're outside the block we're gonna display the total. So we're gonna say see, uh, see out total and then we're gonna put in our total and there we ha go. So let's go ahead and run this. Please enter in a number. Let's do, let's do a 5 first. The total is 10. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. Oops, I mean, wait, hold on. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's how we got the 10. Okay, let's try this again. 100, 4,950. So what, like I said, what it's doing is it's going in and adding up all the numbers together. So for 100, it's doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 all the way to 100. All right, so now that we did it, let me run it one more time. Okay, so now that we did this, we all know that... Um, what it's doing behind the scenes, it's going 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on to all the way to 10 to get that value. So, so let's have some more fun and let's I want to make it display the actual 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 every single time when whatever an amount of numbers it is I want it to display them all automatically and then give us the total at the end. So the be I think the easiest way to do this is to use strings so to do this let's go ahead and uh, we need to include strings oops so let's go ahead and include our string. Now that we have a string, I need to create my string outside the while loop. And every time the while loop goes, it's going to modify that string. So I'm going to say string my string equals, I'm going to start off with the value 0. Um, okay. 
The next thing I'm going to do is every time the while loop runs, I'm going to add to this string. I'm going to concatenate and I'm going to add to it. So I'm going to say string plus equal plus the plus sign and then the count. But I can't just go count like this in C++. Um, in like C Sharp or Java or language, language like that, I could do this. But in C++, I need to convert this into a string. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't do it first. So every time it runs, it's going to add the plus sign and then count to it. So when I run it, it's going to go see out um, my string. Without the converting it to a string, this is what happens. Look. Enter a number, 5. Like I get, what? That makes absolutely no sense. Okay, that's weird. I need to convert count to string. So I'm going to go to string like that and now I want to I converted a count to a string and now when I run this let's see what happens so I want to do five. Oh, look look at that five is equal to 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 but we have a problem we have it uh, starting at zero, so it's saying zero twice. So the way we can fix this is by making count start at one instead of zero, because adding zero doesn't really matter anyway. So now let's run this. Let's do this one more time. Five. Zero plus one plus two plus three plus four. One plus two is three. Three plus three is six. Six plus four is ten. So that's how we did it now. So now we're displaying the zero, one, two, three, four and what it's actually doing behind the scenes which is cool to the user let's try maybe a, a hundred bam look at that isn't that cool it adds it all together now it's showing us what it's doing we could even make this look better by going like um after it adds all the numbers together let's display an equal sign and then we'll plug in the total like that so now when we run it, this is even cooler. Let's go 100. Look, it adds them all together. It displays an equal sign and then displays the value. Let's get a little bit more bigger. Let's go 10. No, let's go 5,000. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, so it goes in and behind the scenes. So we kind of just like built it like what the computer is doing behind the scenes for this operation. I could simply just display the total, but I just want to show you a, a little fun thing that what we could do, you know, with programming. This is what the loop is doing behind the scenes. It's adding all these numbers together. We're just getting the output, which is the answer right there with total. We add the equal sign and we did some concatenation showing all the operations. Right, let's do 10,000. I don't know. It's probably going to take a while. So something cool like this, I'm not going to let it go on, but this is what's doing behind the scenes. This is the power of looping, and I mean, it's going slower than normal because I, I'm displaying the strings, obviously. This would probably be done instantly without the, the displaying the strings, but it takes so long for the output to go, so that's slowing it down a bit. But yeah, this is what it's doing. Um, let's do uh, another short one real fast. Let's do like four. Zero plus one plus two plus three equals six. So, okay, so yeah, so this is the basics of while loops. We added a little bit more fun with using some strings to display all the numbers adding together, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, this is the basic idea of a while loop. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this. Okay, so before we move on to the do while loop, I want to stop here and I want to show you guys quickly. There's two statements or two... Um, I, yeah, I guess you could say statements, um, or I mean not statements, keywords. There's two keywords that can be used with loops. Um, the first one is the continue keyword, and the second one is the break keyword. Now, both of them work with interrupting the flow of a loop, but they both do different things. Okay, so let's set up a basic loop just so we can see what these look like so let's go ahead and make our count while 
Um, let's go. I can't type. While count is less than 10. Um, C out. Let's just do C out. Um, we'll display the count. Yeah, we'll go C out count. Um, yeah, okay. And we'll also make this one so it starts as one and then less than or equal to so it reaches 10. Okay. Let's see what it looks like real quick. And I forgot to look at that. Look. I made an infinite loop. I forgot to do my increment. Now when I run it, <laughs> now it says one to ten. Okay. So now that we have this basic setup, now we can um, demonstrate the continue and break keywords. So the continue keyword. Um, actually, let's do the break. It's easier to understand. The break keyword. So if I use the break keyword inside a loop, wherever it sees, if it hits break, it will break out of the loop, meaning it will stop right there. It will not um, do any more iterations of the loop. Rather, it will just stop where it is and exit the loop. So to demonstrate this, let's set up an if statement. We're going to say if count equals 5. If it does, we're going to break. So what's going to happen is... If count is equal to 5, which it will happen, it will hit 5. Once it does, it breaks out of the loop and does not do anything else after that. So now look at the output. Now we see 1, 2, 3, and 4. See what happened? Once it hit 5, it never displayed the value 5. It broke out of the loop. If I comment this out and run it again, we'll see that it displays everything. So that by implementing the break keyword, you're saying one if you hit the break, break out of this loop, and then um, after it breaks out of the loop, do not execute any more iterations on the loop. Okay, so that's the break. The continue is a little bit different. If I say continue here and put the continue in, this is a little bit different. This says if you hit a continue, skip this iteration. So whatever you're on, just stop right there and go back to the condition and then start over and, and go to the next iteration of it. Okay, so the continue, that's what it does. But now this, this gets a little bit trickier because of how the while loop is set up right now. Right now, how I have it set up, if I were to run this, the same problem would happen as the break. You would see the same output as you can see, one, two, three, four. And the reason is, is because it's hitting the continue every single time because I'm not incrementing count after that. Now, if I use the continue keyword in a for loop, that would be a different story. Um, that would automatically increment it because the increment is in the declaration of the, of the for loop. But it's a little bit different here. Now, the way I could fix this is by putting the count up first, I think. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a break. Now, the output will be a little bit different for this, I think. We might. Yeah, okay. So what's happening here now is because count is at starting at 1, we're not actually seeing the 1 now. I could fix this by going like, um, by putting a 0 here now. And now doing this, now we'll see that same 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now if I switch it to a continue, though, it should work, I think. I hope. Come on. I can't type continue. Okay. Now if I run this, let's see what happens. Now look what we get. We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And <laughs> don't worry about that 11. We're getting that 11 because of how I have it set up right now. Um, but that's all, that's all, the point is that I don't care about the output. I just want to show you that what the continue is doing behind the scenes. If I change this to a six, now we're not going to see that that six anymore. We're going to see one, two, three, four, five, seven. See, we don't we don't see this the six. So what the continue statement does? This is all you need to get out of this. It doesn't really matter of how it's set up. The break statement. If it hits the break, it breaks out of the loop and does not execute anything else. The continue statement, however, the continue statement, if you hit a continue statement, it simply stops where it is and starts back over on the next iteration if it's a for loop. But in this example, if it hits a continue, 
it will go back to the top and start over. That's what a continue does. So that's the difference between a continue and a break. A break breaks out of the loop and stops. The continue just stops where it is and starts um, it starts over from where it left off. It's not going to completely start over. It's just going to start over from where it left off. All right, so that is the break and continue keywords. All right, so the next loop I'm going to show you is called the do while loop. The do while loop is almost identical to the while loop. There's just one slight difference. The only difference between the do while and the while loop is that the do while executes its code, I mean, executes its body of its loop at least one time. The while loop does its condition check first before the loop runs. Whereas the do while loop runs the loop and then checks its condition. So that's the two differences. So let's go ahead and create a do while loop. So to do this, we're going to go, we're going to still make our same count, int count equals zero. Except now we're going to say do the body of the code. So inside the body of the code, we're going to go um, C out, hello world. And then we go, um, here we're going to go while um, count is less, less than 5 or something like that. Okay, and then the last thing I need is I need my increment again, count plus plus. So what this is doing is... It runs it, it runs the loop one time first before it does anything else. So we can always guarantee at least one execution of the body. But besides that, the loops are the same. I mean, it's not really there's not really much to it. Um, even if watch, for example, let's say I make this five to start out with. Am I going to get an output? That's the question. Because if you look at the, the condition of the while loop, 5 is less than 5. That's not true. So I shouldn't get an output. But let's see what happens. Look at that. I got an output. Hello world. And that's only because the body of the loop, which is the do portion, runs at least one time. You can guarantee always a one time run before the while loop executes or the condition executes the diff this is the difference between a, a regular while loop watch let me let me switch this around ready oops okay all right so i switch it back to a regular while loop now what will happen this is a regular while loop it, this does the, the check first, so what will happen? Let's let's check. Bam, nothing, nothing is displayed. So that's the difference between a do while and a while loop. Look, the while loop it checks first. It says, is count less than five? Is five less than five? Nope. So it skips over the while loop. A do while, however, if I do the do while loop again, as you can see, it first does the loop without any condition. The, the condition is at the end of the loop. So it just goes do. So it does do this first. That's what it says. So it goes C out and it runs this code the first time around, no matter what. Even though five is still less than I mean, even though five less than five is false, it still runs the code. So it always displays the hello world at least one time. Alright. So the last thing I'm going to show in this lesson is the for loop. Now, remember what I said at the beginning of the lesson. A while loop is a very powerful loop. Same with a do while. A while loop can do many things. It doesn't have to only do definite loops like I showed you here, but it also can do indefinite loops. Um, like I said, an, an, an indefinite loop is something that you know we don't know when we're programming it how long it's going to last. It, it ends depending on what the user does or something like that. But a for loop is pretty much a shorthand for doing the while loop uh, definite loop. So let's go ahead and create a while loop again. So 
So this is the while loop. Now I'm going to do all this with the for loop in one line. Well, actually, just the just the declaration of the loop in one line because a for loop is a shorthand for this type of loop. So now this is a for loop. The syntax is for in parentheses your counter control variable declaration. So int c. I'll say int um actually I'll do int i. That's so. That's the same thing as int count. So int i equals zero. That's my control. I mean counter control variable. Then it's your condition. So as long as i is less than five, then semicolon. Then your your increment or your um, uh, your mutator or your changer. I mean, there's like a song that beginner programmers sing or something that um, you know r reminds them what where to put where in this. I don't I don't really know it. I know that it's like your initialize initialize check change and all or initialize compare change I don't know something like that anyway so the last thing is your change so I want to do I plus plus so that's my loop and now inside of my loop I just do the output so this that's it so this right here is the same thing as this these are logically equivalent both of these they both do the same thing however the for loop is a shorthand let me show you for the while loop, definite loop, um, the counter control, the counter control variable is right here. For a for loop, the counter control variable is right here. For a definite while loop, the the comparison is right here, the condition, and for a for loop, it's right here, separated by semicolons. And for the increment. In the definite while loop, it's right here. And for the for loop, it's right here. So the for loop just takes the three components necessary for a definite while loop and just combines it into one statement or one line in the for loop. And then you don't have to worry about the increment inside the body anymore. So like I said, the for loop is just a specialized while loop. Um, it's a specialized while loop at doing definite loops. A while loop can also do indefinite loops, but I did not show you that. Um, but yeah. So this is the differences between a while loop and a for loop. Let me go ahead and delete this and run this just so you can see that it actually does work. And as you can see, we get the same result. Hello world five times. Alright, so... That's it for um, this lesson. Um, the next lesson is going to be on arrays, I believe so. And the reason why I'm doing arrays next is because arrays, even though you don't, probably don't know what array is yet, um, an array is something, or loops and arrays go hand to hand. Um, the reason is because an array uses an index to access its elements, that's what it's called, and a loop or a counter control loop has a counter control that represents pretty much or can represent the same set of elements or the same index of elements. So they work hand to hand, so that's why I showed you loops first. So although you can use loops for things like this, another big um, reason that people use loops is for accessing and, you know, and interacting with arrays or anything that actually implements the index or operator which um, I might get into in maybe an advanced C++ section but however um, loops and arrays go hand to hand and the next lesson is going to be an array so you'll see how in the next lesson we'll talk about arrays and we'll also talk about how we um, you know declare and, and get values and things like that of arrays using loops so, um, yeah, so if you don't understand loops completely right now, don't worry. From now, like, from all our examples from after this, they'll most likely all have loops in them. So anytime you're rusty, we'll be working with them all the time so that um, you'll see how to use them and you'll see them over and over again. Eventually, they'll become second nature to you like they are for most programmers. Um, you'll never have to sit there and be like, okay, how do I create a for loop? It will just come. It's naturally. Like you could, you should be able to just write a for loop instantly. Like for int i equals zero, blah blah blah. It's very simple. You'll get the hang of it if you stick with it. So, um, 
but especially next lesson with arrays, we're using loops so much because arrays and loops go hand to hand. So that's it for this lesson. Um, hope you guys liked it, um, and be sure to um, stay tuned uh, for my next lesson on fundamentals of C++. Thanks for watching.